Well, good morning. morning. By the way, you're not supposed to do that. Did you know that? I I listened to a guy talking about giving speeches, and you're not supposed to say good morning, and I'm like, I've been doing it wrong for 25 years. Oh, well. I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it right now. So it's great to see you guys today, and I am glad to be here. I felt like the humidity was less. It was only 94% today. <laughs> if somebody's visiting from up north, they're like, what? Right now. So what's funny is to go somewhere like Denver or something in the summer, and it gets up to 88, and they're all going, this is just terrible. And you're like, what? Now I know who people from Arizona feel when they come here. They're like, I can breathe. Well, actually, they're more like, I need a snorkel. So you ever have opportunities for opportunities? You ever had that chance in life where it's a time for you to have an opportunity? We used to call them problems, right? Uh, I remember when it was about three months before Kyle was born, and I got that call from the administrator at the school. I was a first-year teacher, and she said, just so you know, which is not always a good start, the county is laying off all first-year teachers. Woohoo! Opportunity. And so Brevard County was hiring at that point, had lots of openings, so I came up and interviewed at Brevard County for months, and all the principals hired their friends who were uneducated and did not hire this young guy. So I worked maintenance, worked at Quincy's, and sub, with you, yeah, and substitute taught for about a year and a half, and then uh, started teaching. Not too long after that, taught at Park Avenue at school. I actually taught Danielle, uh, who's helping with the kids this morning, leading the kids. And, um, but I look back at that, and I can remember that awful feeling of what am I going to do? All of a sudden, everything changed. And of course, you kind of know the end of, well, maybe not the end of my story, hopefully not today. No, Kristen said I'm good. All right, so... But you at least know this part. I wouldn't have been in Brevard County had not, if I hadn't gotten that phone call. And so today we're going to look at Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and we're going to talk about their opportunity. And near the end, I'll give you just a little heads up of how God used that. But I want to, I, I think we all have these exile moments. And what I mean by that is these moments where all of a sudden we have to deal with an opportunity. So I, I was talking to my Sunday school class this morning, and I got a few things that I put in here just to give you some ideas of things that are said to you when you know that's happening. I don't love you anymore. It's an exile moment. It's terminal. It's an exile moment. I want a divorce. It's an exile moment. I think you need to claim bankruptcy. An exile moment. We're downsizing, which is a nice way of saying fired. Fired. But there you go. I don't know if you've had this phone call. This is Officer Smith. Or there's been an accident. Had your boss call you in and say, we're going a different direction? You mean I'm not going with that direction? (laughs) Right? We're not renewing your contract, somebody told me this morning. You know, sometimes it's that one sentence that just rocks our world. We have something happen, all of a sudden everything changes. And just like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, everything suddenly changes. Imagine what their life was like. They were in the palace in Jerusalem. They were part of the nobility. We know that from what it says in the first few verses of this book. And all of a sudden, they're dragged across the desert about 1,400 miles miles of walking. Um, If you walked, I believe, from Miami to Chicago, it's not that far. You could walk into Canada or into Mexico before you would walk as far as they walked in chains through the desert, taken away from home. Who knows if their guards were killed in front of them or their Families were murdered in front of them. And all of a sudden, everything they've always known is taken away from them. And even more, when they 
get there, Nebuchadnezzar decides, not only am I going to do this, I'm going to change their names. I'm going to change their language. I'm going to change what they know and who they know and who they're around and what they eat and everything else. And he's made all these decisions for them. Nowadays, we call that grooming. But back then, it was just a way to keep control of a territory. You took their children and then you put them in your castle and the parents knew they had to behave and keep their kids alive. So we don't often think of that part of the story when we talk about Daniel. We think of Daniel in the lion's den and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. And we think of this story where we look at what they eat. But you have to realize what they have been through already. They already have PTSD. We would definitely call it PTSD today because what they have, I can't even Imagine, most of us wouldn't want to walk one mile with someone we don't like. Much less 1,400 miles being yelled at by people who don't even speak the same language we do and being told, keep going in the heat. So today we're going to look at this idea and look at choices when our faith is tested in exile. Those moments where Things change where we have to deal with something we've never dealt with. And how do you respond? How do I respond when everything in our lives changes? Well, how do you deal with tough circumstances? How do you deal with tough news? How do you deal with the next step? How do you deal with somebody telling you something that you don't like? And what do you do with that? And so today we're going to give you three options. And I hope you'll choose the good one. This happens about 600 years before Christ. This was all prophesied about back in the Old Testament. And we're going to pick up with number one. We can choose to be discouraged or be determined. Now, discouragement can come over you suddenly. And I don't know if you've done this, but I have woke up for no reason discouraged. I think sometimes we're just tired. Sometimes we've dealt with heaviness the day before or the week before. Sometimes we're just human. Maybe we have sleep apnea and don't know it. So we stop breathing 42 times in the middle of the night just for fun. <laughs> By the way, my dad did that when I was a kid. We didn't know it was sleep apnea. We just thought he died for a moment every once in a while. We knew better than to wake my dad up at night, because if you woke him up at night, you probably would end up on the floor. So we always went to mom's side of the bed. Daniel 1, we're going to pick up in verse 3. By the way, if you ever struggle with names in the Bible, just say them very confidently, and people will think they've been pronouncing it wrong their whole life. <laughs> Now you know my secret. <laughs> then the king ordered a should have banana says. <laughs> Don't do that. Chief of his court officials to bring the king's servant service some of the Israelites, listen, from the royal family and from the nobility. So they were raised, I mean, they had Nintendo. Xbox, I know. We used to have Nintendo. Atari. Coleco. That's way back. You know you're old if you actually had a steering wheel that was on a triangle. And Pong, yeah. Pong with actual, yeah. I had both of those things. Young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning. I love this. Well informed, so they've already been educated, quick to understand. Boy, I am off this list way back. Like I've already been eliminated. I was eliminated number one. Dave, you and I both, we're just, we're out. Physical defect. Mm, okay. Quick to understand, qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. 
The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years. And after that, they were to enter the king's service. Among those who were chosen were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief official gave them new names. To Daniel, the name Belteshazzar. To Hananiah, Shadrach. To Mishael, Meshach. And to Azariah, Azariah Abednego. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself in this way. So they were all brought in. They were going to be educated in the way of the Babylonians. But not only that, they took away their names. See, all four of these young men had names that pointed to God, to Jehovah, to the Jewish God. And their names were each changed to represent a different Babylonian God. And the reason the Babylonians felt like they had the right to do that is because they had already gone into the Jewish temple, took all of their gold and precious things, and basically, we win, we beat your God, and now you're done. They were the Deion Sanders of the day. By the way, his team won yesterday. If you didn't know that, it is all the news, all the rage. They are the champions, my friend. And they'll keep on fighting till the end. Now I know what you'll be singing the rest of the day, Randy. Randy's already singing it. I can see it. He's humming. So the truth is, what happened? They felt like our God won. So why have a name of your God? Take the name of our one of our gods. Because we're the victorious ones. And so this is just mocking them and putting them in their place and saying to them, your God doesn't matter. And yet it says that Daniel resolved. And that means in his heart, he said, you know what? They can change my name. They can change my location. I can't do anything about that. I've been dragged into their service, which I'm just going to make the best of. But I am not going to eat bacon. Now, you need to understand this about back then, because back then, so Jewish had dietary laws. And the truth is, the Jewish dietary laws at the time they were written kept them safe from so many diseases. You ever read about how some cultures eat bats? Not so good, right? You would never go out and purposefully eat a vulture, right? <laughs> yeah, it sicked you out just now. That's how they thought of pigs. Because during this time, pigs were not grain fed. Pigs were not just eating slop. During this time, pigs were running wild and eating anything and everything. Imagine a vulture. And so they're bringing this in and Daniel saying, wait a second, that is not honoring God. On top of that, a lot of the food they were eating was sacrificed to their God. And that was a form of worship to them to worship their God. You ate what they brought you, which was, hey, have some bale burgers. And so. Daniel resolves in his heart, you know what? You can change this, you can change this, you can change this, but I'm going to follow God in this conviction in my life. Instead of getting discouraged, he became determined. You ever been overwhelmed with discouragement? When you feel discouraged about a situation in your life, when you feel discouraged about something that's going on to you that you feel like you don't have control of, by the way, you don't have control of. I want to encourage you to ask God, God, would you help me instead to be determined to do what you've called me to during this time? I remember that time when Kyle was about to be born and I was trying to figure out work. I decided, you know what, God, whatever you give me, I'm just going to be the best I can at that job. So when I worked at Quincy's, I tried to say, I'm going to do the best I can at that job. It wasn't very good. You were so much better. But when I worked maintenance, I read books on how to clean floors. 
When I substitute taught, I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plan and prepare lessons as a substitute, which is crazy. But I said, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do the best I can. Daniel and his friends were the same way. But they said, we're going to do our best, but we are not going to give in to living the way everyone else is living. In Joshua 1.9, Daniel would have known this verse. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. See, Moses had died, it says in the beginning of Joshua chapter 1, and I'm sure Joshua was freaked out and saying, what do I do? And so he's told, be strong and courageous. Listen, when you're going through difficulty, when you're going through a challenge, when you're going through an exile, when it seems like everything suddenly is taken away and you realize it's your place to step up God would you make me strong and courageous God would you make me determined instead of discouraged by the way discouragement is just a feeling feelings are not always right do you know how I know that because I was a junior high youth pastor and those kids were always in love for a week, <laughs> right? Your feelings are that fickle. Your feelings are still in junior high. You just haven't realized it yet. And you're paying way too much attention to an emotion instead of a goal. And so Daniel saw what was going on around him and he said, you know what, we're not going to do that. We're going to do what God's called us to. And he stood up for what was right. I love what David Jeremiah says. God is faithful and that trumps all of our problems, our tears, our tragedies, and the very prospect of death itself. Number two, we can compromise or be courageous. Now, Kristen knows I love colorful socks. I love all kinds of socks. I've got Mr. Rogers socks. My kids bought me a sock that matches my dog. I have socks from a band trip that one of them went on and has four leaf clovers on it. They're my lucky Irish socks, even though I don't believe in luck. But here's the problem. I refuse to match socks. So when I... Amen. Thank you. I love that I got an amen for that. That was awesome. Now, my preference would be to have 400 of the exact same socks, so I don't have to worry about it. But since I like colorful socks, I have ruined that. And it started when I was in college because by Thursdays in college, I was just lucky I had a clean pair of socks that didn't match. And back in the old days, you'd wear socks, pull them to your knees, and they had stripes on them, some red, some blue. I had those socks. I had aqua shorts with giant sailboats on them. I had... White shirts with large red stripes that went down them. And I wore all of that at the same time on a Thursday to class. And I walked into class half awake, a 7.30 class on a Thursday morning. And one of the other students looked over at me and said, Dude, you don't match at all. And I said, Did you not hear? Like, what? It's no match Thursday, dude. If you look at the yearbook, the year I graduated from college, you will find a picture of a bunch of guys all dressed, ties, shorts, two different socks, all matched. And underneath it, it says, no match Thursday. I'm so proud of my legacy. But here's the truth about life. The world wants to just hand you whatever and is hoping you'll just take whatever you're handed. And so you'll just, whatever you're doing, you'll just continue to do. However you're living, you'll just continue. Whatever you're watching on TV, you'll continue to watch. Haven't you ever wondered why that first episode of the sitcom that you like is very clean? And then it goes downhill after that? Have you ever noticed that? Like a lot of sitcoms, the first one, it has no language. It has nothing foul. And you think, hey, that was a pretty good show. Wasn't that a good show? And then you watch the second one. And you're like, oh, that was a little worse. I, but it's such a good show. And by the fifth one, you're like, don't tell anybody we watched that show. 
Because what happened? They just started handing you socks. By the way, I am wearing two different socks today, if you can't tell. But I didn't wear my bacon socks. Last night was double bacon. These are my pineapple socks. I did put those together. Actually, I think Kristen put those together because I probably didn't. So the truth is, in life, you've got to not just take what the world hands to you. You you can't just watch whatever they throw at you. You can't just pay attention to what they tell you to pay attention to. You You can't let the news tell you what you're mad about or afraid about every week. Please. Every, yeah. Now you're clapping, but if I came to your house, you'd be mad at me when I say that to you. Like, yay, he's talking about the other news station. No, no, yours. Whichever one you watched. Whatever you're mad about today, that's the one I'm talking about, right? You think it's about them. No, 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 it's about all of us. Why? Because I do the same thing. I flip back and forth just so I can be mad at two totally different things. Man, that guy's got Alzheimer's. Click. Man, that guy's got Alzheimer's too. Does every politician have Alzheimer's? What? I hate all of them now. I don't know, right? Sorry, that has nothing to do with the sermon. Daniel 1, verse 12. Here we go. Here's what Daniel says. So, so he goes to the head of eunuchs. By the way, that should give you a hint. Since they're under the authority of the head of eunuchs, you make your own story there. Daniel never had kids, never married. Okay? Your life looking a lot better right now? Okay. Please test your servants for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. You talk about a sacrifice. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food. By the way, Daniel is about 15. And treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed and tested them for 10 days. Listen to this. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. Time out. So they, they're comparing Daniel and his friends who ate vegetables and water to 15-year-olds who were given a buffet of as much as they wanted to eat and unlimited wine. Spring break, Daytona, (laughs) Daniel and his friends. Do do you see how much they stood out? Imagine at 15, do you remember 15? Did you make some dumb decisions at 15? Did you suddenly remember those dumb decisions? There's forgiveness in Jesus. Okay. (laughs) But imagine if, not only that, you were taking everything away and you were even thinking, God has abandoned me. God doesn't love me. Why should I serve him? Haven't you ever thought that when things get rough? Well, they did. And so he compares them and then it continues. So the guard took away their choice food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. To these four young men, God gave knowledge, understanding of all kind of literature, which is really cool. They had a library and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. By the way, I love it. You know, the book of Daniel is written in several languages and and scholars love to say, well, Daniel couldn't have written it. How would he know two languages? Have you read the... No, you haven't. That's the reason you don't like it. So Daniel's head of his class The other boys are partying and Daniel's like, you know what? We're going to do what God wants us to. I'm going to be submitted to God during this time. You know, in Corinth, Paul is dealing with an early church that's in the middle of the Las Vegas slash New Orleans slash name your own city of their day. Corinth became known not for Corinthian leather, but for all debauchery. And so Paul talks to the early church, and here's what he says to them in 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Be on your guard, which literally means stay awake. And I want to encourage you, church, stay awake to what you watch. Stay awake to what you listen to. Stay awake to what you're reading. Because if you don't pay attention to that, you'll just end up eating the same food as everyone else. Some of us may need a little fast from some of what we've been reading and watching. Stand firm in the faith. B 
be courageous, which literally means just be brave. And then it says, finally, be strong. And I looked up that word, be strong in the Greek. And it's such a great word. It means be strong. And so there's times that you just have to choose. I, I, I'm going to continue to walk forward. I'm going to continue to be courageous. I could compromise at this point. I could just choose any sock. I could just read anything that everybody else is reading. I could just believe all the stuff everybody's believing. Or I can say, God, you know what? I choose you. In a world that wants to give me a new name, I'm choosing to, give, to take the name that you've given me. By the way, I love that Daniel's called Daniel. We don't call him you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they get called their non-Jewish names all the time. But Daniel's Daniel. When you get to heaven and you call those guys, they're going to be like, dude, that is not the name I like. You're like, you're Shadrach, right? Stand firm in the faith. So let me ask you this question. Can you have courage when you feel like quitting? Everybody feels like quitting. I, I can tell you right now, I'll have two or three pastor friends of mine text me tomorrow. Oh man, I think I'm done. Happens all the time. And over the years, I've had seminary professors say, guys, don't quit on Monday. So a friend of mine quit Sunday afternoon. I'm like, well, that wasn't what... <laughs> They said one of the new studies has said that a lot of people in church right now, churches are growing, but the volunteers, the people who help, aren't growing yet. That's just how it is. So you're going to get frustrated and quit or are you going to say, God, you know what? Would you make me courageous? Help me to go forward with what you want me to go for. What do you want me to do? Number three, are we going to self-gratify or grow? Now, I hate to ask this because my wife's going to keep her hand down, but it's okay. How many of you like the movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Okay, there we go. There we go. Don't look at my wife. Don't look. Don't look. It's okay. It's Grandpa Joe's fault. You Google Grandpa Joe is evil and watch the video. It's absolutely true. Grandpa Joe is evil. He was in Chico and the Man. Didn't do any better in, in this movie. But at the end of the movie, if you remember, Grandpa Joe says, hey, let's take that gobstopper and we're going to go give it to the enemy. Come on, let's go. Let's get vengeance. And young Charlie goes to Mr. Wonka and says, here you go, Mr. Wonka, and puts the gobstopper on his desk. Why? Because he says, I'm going to choose to do what's right. And Mr. Wonka looks at him and goes, you did it! And I think sometimes God in heaven is looking at us when we go through one of those trials, one of those struggles. And we think it's about the big picture. We think it's about this over here or that over there. And God's saying, just be faithful. And when we're faithful, I think God looks over at the angels and goes, they did it! And Gabriel's like, I'm as surprised as you. I, I've watched Eric a long time. Verse 18 to 20 says this, At the end of the time set by the king to bring them into his service, the chief officials presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. By the way, Nebuchadnezzar, most powerful king on earth at this time. Dude could look at you and go, Eh, I don't like him, kill him. The king talked with them, found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. Second Peter 3.18 says, Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And what you don't understand, you look at this and you say, Why? God allowed all this to happen and these guys are just trying to break Daniel and his friends. But what they didn't know is God had a bigger purpose. So about 600 years after this. See, Daniel during this time then became the head of the magicians. Or what we might call wise men. And Daniel became head of the wise men and... In Babylon, about 600 years later, those wise men had heard from Daniel about a star that would appear, that would identify the Messiah. And those guys got on their camels or whatever they had and brought gold and frankincense and myrrh. 
which scholars tell us is from Babylon, in order to meet a king that they had heard about from some young boys that were taken prisoner as children and were faithful to God. And so I want to ask you today, as you're going through whatever you're going through, can you be faithful to what God has for you? Because maybe it's not even for you that God is doing something right now in your life. Maybe that difficulty that you're walking through and it's so painful and you don't understand and you don't know why God would let that thing happen, that hurt happen, that situation happen, and yet God says, just be faithful in the middle of this circumstance and I will work it all out in the end. And He always does. So I don't know if you're in the deepest, darkest valley right now. I don't know if you feel like you're walking across the desert or if you feel like you're being tempted by all kind of things. Just be faithful and let God work it out. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can do that today. I'd love to talk to you after the service about what it means that we're sinners and broken and messed up and Jesus came and died for us. And when we surrender our lives to him and say, Jesus, I want to follow you the great transaction takes place and he gives us his righteousness and takes our sin. So if you want to talk about that and what it means to be a Christian after service, I'd love to talk to you. If you're here today and you're walking through something deep, then pray, God, would you give me courage? Would you give me strength? Would you give me your power? I just want to be strong and courageous today. Lord, would you help me? And that's a prayer he always answers. Would you join me as we close in prayer? We'll have our offering next. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time together. I thank you for this great story of Daniel and his friends. I thank you that we can look back and see the end of the story, but we know Daniel and his friends could not. They were just being faithful in the moment. So Lord, help us to be faithful in the moment, even though we don't know the end of our story. Lord, help us to be courageous in what is going on in our lives, with the pain, with the struggle, with the difficulty just to do what's right. Lord, I pray for that one today who's discouraged that they would know your strength even now. We thank you for these moments together. In Jesus' name, amen.